we have two topics that we want to discuss. One yeah. is mental health, mental health, well-being, how to deal with mm -hmm. mental health. Is that right, Alex? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you attack it on a day to day basis? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Cool. And then the second one is, does being in a relationship with somebody who has right. a a social media presence hinder the progression or the natural evolution evolution uh -huh. of a relationship man that just mm. came out so smooth I, it didn't even sound like that in my head here's what i vote and tell me what you prefer yeah we can either start with the social media presence and relationship thing see if it leaks into mental health and well-being or mm. we start with mental health and well-being see how we get on with that and then just so, move on to the next topic yeah no, i think we should start off with the mental health part because i will start from my part because i've actually done right one video on mental health and this video was doing the start of my youtube journey so what happened was i was back at university i used to play sports i still play sports but i was playing sports heavily that time and i'm very good at my number of sports table tennis football anyways as i was playing table tennis there's this guy who used to play table tennis with for quite a lot he's a guardian guy obviously back then coming from a more of an African background obviously mental health is something that we just they just brush aside like oh, what's wrong with you like it's not that big 100%. deal and obviously I had that kind of mentality as well to be honest with you I'm not going to lie to you I had that kind of mentality as well yeah. so mm -hmm. anyways to cut the story short I had two jobs one of them was in my university accommodation which which means that they gave me a place to stay and the other one was also at my university but this was serving food the one that they gave me a place to stay Obviously, I got a bit complacent, so they they sacked me. So now I have to move out to go and look for a place to stay. So obviously, I call up the my guy that we used to play table tennis with. I was like, "Oh, can I come and stay in your place?" But obviously, yeah. when I started staying in this place, the first couple of days was all right. Like nothing was happening. Like we're all cool. Then after like the next two days, obviously certain things were there was there was a sudden change. Like so, I'm thinking, what's going on? When and you say sudden change, do you mean in the relationship between you two or just in yourself? No, nah, just sudden change in him. There were things that happened, like, but obviously I don't want to go too much in, but there was there was a change in him. And so obviously, so it's like coming out with statements like, oh, they're against me. They're fighting me. So I'm thinking, so I'm looking around the room like, who who is against you? Who's fighting you? So but I'm like wondering like, what's going on? Like he's seeing hallucinations and stuff. So obviously from okay. sleeping in his room, obviously I progressed my way to sleeping in the in the lounge. Because obviously I didn't feel I didn't feel safe anymore. So literally yeah. one one day I had I was working in, in a breakfast. So I came back home and, I, and he had a knife and he was just walking around the lounge that I was staying in. So obviously while I'm sleeping, obviously I'm using one eye as well to look at the direction of the knife as well to know where is he going to you know what I mean but obviously and then all of a sudden like obviously things happened as well he ended up in London so obviously and then what happened was he made a Snapchat video saying oh bye to my mum bye to my dad and obviously because I had a naive idea about mental health I just thought oh Listen, I'm tired anyway. And plus, I thought, oh, he's African. Nothing's going to happen. Let me just, let me go it's sleep. Time yeah. So, yeah, yeah. and then his flatmates start knocking on the door like, ah, oh, have you seen this guy? Have you seen him? Have you heard the video? I was like, I was trying to act as if, no, I didn't see it. Like, oh, no, nah, I didn't yeah, see yeah. it. To play it Before you know it, they called the police. And then when they called the police, obviously, I've had to be going police station like every week, like, not knowing this guy's in London somewhere, I think we're doing something else. But anyways, to cut the story short, after I saw this guy, after you can tell that physically, mentally, everything changed. It wasn't the same. Like, it wasn't the same. And since that time, I thought, well, you know what? Mental health is something I need to start taking a bit serious. You know what I mean? Because the way it's... Because obviously everybody, everybody goes, a lot of people go to the gym, they work on their physical health. And yeah. Obviously that's what we see. But our mind as well, we need to work on our mind as well. We Absolutely. need to 
we, we definitely need to because for me for me probably my mind is probably my strongest aspect of myself only because obviously through my time i faced a lot of challenges and i'll be honest yeah. with you i face a lot of challenges exercise is important for myself and for my mental ability so sometimes we're about prioritizing like look your health your mental awareness is very very important and i think yeah. it's it's health is wealth you know what i mean and we can yeah. make all these money we can make all these money but if you don't have good health there's no point there's no point to be fair mental health is I don't know what it's like, what you're going to tell me your experience is going to be like, Alex. Uh, I'm always happy to hear everybody's experience, but what um, Mr. CV has basically said is very similar to, I think it's, I don't want to tie it under black culture, okay? But I think it's very common in African society, especially mm -hmm. from like Nigeria society where I came from, okay. where, the term, where the term mental health or you're depressed or you are stressed when you're mm -hmm. a specific age for example in life is what are you stressed for what are you depressed for like you are mm. not it's not that you're depressed it's that you're not solving the situation you're not allowed you know you're allowing the situation to take hold of you rather than you taking hold of the situation right and i was always raised with this with this saying you know from my from my dad he whenever I was frustrated about a problem or a situation, he would always say to me, does the problem have a mouth? And I'll, and I'll be like, what do you mean, does the problem have a mouth? He's like, does the problem have a mouth? And I'll say, no. He said that it does, if it doesn't have a mouth, it doesn't have a brain. So therefore it cannot be smarter than you because you have a brain. So therefore you're not thinking about it the right way. That's why you mm -hmm. are having these feelings, oh, wow. right? So, you know, I lived the best part of my teenage, you know, my young, let's say from 13 up to 25, 26, with that, with that notion of anything that is happening to me, it can't be smarter than me because it doesn't have a mouth. I'm not thinking about it properly. Absolutely, so therefore yeah. I'm not solving the situation properly, right? Mm. And, you know, you would think, I guess that that kind of advice is is motivating or inspiring but not always the case because in my experience i ended up thinking myself into a depression you know that's where you know i before i even knew that there was a term you could think yourself into a depression i was already doing it right so i spent the best part of my young young to medium adult life depressed without realizing I'm depressed. I just thought I'm frustrated. I'm the, f I'm the eldest of six siblings. So I am the first. And in, like I said, in, in our culture, um, you know, when you're the firstborn, you, you have a responsibility that everything you do, everybody behind you will follow you. You got to do everything via the proverbial book. So I spent a lot of time, you know, in a place of depression without realizing when my marriage ended, that just pushed me over the edge because you're raised to believe that um, you go to co you go to school, you go to college, you go to university, you get a good job, you find a book woman, you slow down, you get married, then you've clocked life. You know, you've clocked it now. Everything else after marriage is supposed to be, I don't know, on autopilot. You know, you have that yeah. naive feeling. So that's what happened to me anyway. And obviously it didn't go the way that the plan was supposed to have gone and everything fell to pieces. And I lived in a very, very, you know, dark place. Um, the term is where I learned the term Murphy's Law, you know, where anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Kind of scenario. Yeah, or yeah. The bit, yeah. Or the better description is anything that can happen will happen. So whether good or bad, Murphy's Law comes into play so i had i had the, the the negative impact of murphy's law i lost my wife i didn't feel great about myself because if your marriage or your relationship ends you don't feel good about yourself because you take it personally i couldn't be there for my kids as well as i wanted to that i lost multiple jobs back to back like i couldn't hold a job down for two three months that i almost became homeless do you know and there are a few other things in the background that happened but i just remember being in a place where i just sat on my bed 
and I just didn't get up. I didn't want to get up, you know, to pull myself out of there because I believe sometimes if you're very lucky and you're very blessed, you will have somebody in your life that will help pull you from the darkness and never get fed up and never get tired of you. And I think, I think at some point you need to be able to have had somebody who's been in the darkness before to know how to pull you out of the darkness versus somebody who's never really had such an experience, right? And um, I just remember having to pull myself out because a lot of people come to me for guidance to pull them out. So if I can't be Superman, no, no one's going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to be what people need me to be, I guess. So I just, I think I just remember laying there and listening to a lot of motivational stuff because that's what we do, don't we? We go to the motivational videos and we go yeah. to the self-help books because that's what people say. And um, we don't listen to the the thing inside our, the, the, the whisper inside us that tells us just do this one thing, you know? And I think I, I went through loads of self-help. I went through Eric Thomas, uh, uh, T.D. Jakes, uh, Mel Robbins, Lisa, Lisa Nichols, um, uh, Tony Robbins. I went through all those guys, Inky Johnson. And then I just, you know, I, I found as corny as it sounds, the five second rule to just get me out of bed, you know? And I yeah, had to, yeah. Yeah. And I had to sit down and, you know, this is the, this is the hardest, but I think this is the hardest part when you go through any form of stuff like this is trying to find what you're good at. Just like Mr. CV said, I know one thing I was good at. I can lift weights. Do you know what I mean? I can yeah, lift yeah. weights and I, and, and I can mark progression on lifting weights. Really? Do you know what I mean? Because you can tell every day if you're getting stronger. And the only thing I got to do is show up, right? I just got to turn up and just do that consistently, you know, because at least that was still running in my life. My gym membership was still running. For some reason, no matter how broken thingy I was, my gym membership was still running. So I did that, you know, and I just made a point to get up every day and just do that one thing. Just wow. do that, you know? And just, just through doing that and making it look like, do you know what? I'm okay at this. I can do this. You know, without realizing it, the same way you thought yourself into depression is the same way you think yourself into progression. I try to let people know that it, it, depression is a thing. Mental health is a thing. Do you understand? Everybody's mental health is not on a chart so you can equate who's is worse and who's is better or whatever. Everybody has it. Do you know what I mean? But the same way um everybody can have this situation you have to try to make sure that the situation doesn't have you you know of course yeah because as as i look now and people will say to me oh my god you're so confident or you're so this or you're so that listen i have bad days i have bad weeks do you know what i mean but i I try not to let them have me yeah i just try not to let them have me anymore i have them rather than them having me. What about you? What did you want to say? What, what's your experience? Or what, where do you want to come from, come with this? Well, it's, it's kind of hard to know where to start, really, because I know I've had I've had quite a few bad experiences over the years, and I've still got some struggles now, but, I mean, I kind of, I've just learned to deal with, I suppose I've just learned to manage them better mentally, and I don't let, let them have as much of a mental impact on me as I used to. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, I, I always struggled through school. I mean, both throughout primary and secondary school, it just, it did work for me. It wasn't for me. And this, and I think the thing is as well, because, you know, you have to go to school. Like, it's it's the law. So, you know, I had no choice at that point in my life. And I just hated it every day, every, like every single day. I had to go, I just had to go and do it and stick with it. And obviously my mental health, it suffered as a result, you know, so much over the years. And obviously, but at the time, you know, like you were saying, you know, I didn't realise that this is actually, you know, depression or anxiety that I'm suffering with. You know, I just, yeah, you know, I just feel scared. Yeah, you know, so I didn't really understand understand it at that point. And then, um, of course, I mean, obviously, I left school, and then obviously, I learned a bit more about mental health, and then it kind of got to a point even when I was at college because college, I, I just expected things to get so much better, and they didn't. Like, although yeah, I was, yeah. the course, I did enjoy the course and stuff, but the people, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't really particularly keen on the people. And, you know, again, the whole education system, and I was in the most toxic relationship. 
in the world but like and then obviously at that point I just kind of I kind of because I kind of learned what depression was I kind of knew yeah this is I've hit rock bottom and it took yeah. me so long to get out of this I mean I got cheated on four times I got she lied to me about being pregnant mm. and then um I mean at the time yeah so there was a lot of stuff that went on there but and it took me like I think eight months before I got myself out of that situation because I think when you really care about a person I think especially because that was like my first proper relationship as well and you know you kind of even though deep down you know what they're doing to you you still you keep going back if that makes sense yeah it's easier said than yeah. done to just walk away in a lot of situations 100%. and then um but yeah so i ended up getting getting out of that and then of course i still had the struggles with college and everything and then i ended up getting pneumonia oh wow so this was um no, oh, thank you, man. But yeah, definitely. Um, so I had to obviously leave college, and then um, eventually, and it took um, it took its toll on me. And you know, for a while, yeah. you know, I was literally just sitting at home. I was going to bed at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and then I wouldn't wake up till like yeah. three, four in the afternoon. That was like, and then I would just sit at home, watch TV, eat yeah. junk food, and that'd be my life. And it, for about nine months, that it took me about nine months to have got myself out of that place, and then all, yeah. all of a sudden, I you know, I started work. I like I got a small job. It wasn't like a, anything big, but I, and I was in a couple of bands. That I just got up and running. Things were going well. Then lockdown happened, and then I just thought I'm in the same position again. My life's put on hold again. So I had a bit of a breakdown yeah. when that all happened. And then um, I got through. Obviously um. Had to get through it, did what I had to do. Yeah. But then, um, you know, it was obviously went on for two years. But then, obviously, I then got a job, which I just, yeah. I, I couldn't stand it. Yeah. And I just, um, I mean, I had a few jobs throughout lockdown as well. But they, they didn't last long because of the situation we were in. You know, they were just, they couldn't keep me on because, you know, they didn't have enough money and whatnot. So it was... Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so I managed to get this one job that I managed to stick with for about four months, but it was just, it was awful. And I absolutely hated it. And it took, yeah. and because obviously having to go through school and stuff, I promised myself I never wanted to do a job that I hated. And obviously yeah. I was in that same position again. And I was just like, God's sake, I can't. So I left that job. Yeah. And I very much came to the decision. This is why I talk about my music and stuff now. And I know a lot of people yeah. are going to disagree with the predicament I'm in at the moment. But right. like, I'm very much... I made the deal with myself. I am purely going to focus on my drumming until I make it. I'm not going to do any other job alongside it. I'm just going to, that is going to be my number one focus, no matter what. Okay. And then, you know, so I'm not. Wrong with that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, they're saying, you know, oh, you need the money coming in. You need this, you need that, you need the other. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, if I'm going to do a job that I hate, it's going to have, an impact on my mental health and that's more important than money in my opinion you, you need to be happy and satisfied with what you're doing at the end of the day yeah. and i'll admit i'm so, not in the best sorry go on financial place no no go for it bro yeah i was just gonna say i'm not in the best financial place at the moment but you know what i'm getting by with what i've got and i can scrape through at the end of the day and you know i am earning money from the gigs i am doing so i've just got to stick with that and i'll get more as time goes on but I think over the years, I have um, very much learned that, you know, if you are suffering with mental health and it came to this, um, this happened when, you know, my mum came out of hospital because it had been a really traumatic time and yeah. I was very much reflecting on it. And then I was very much just sitting around, very much just wallowing in self-pity. And I just, yeah. so what happened from that point on, I just very much, I very much woke up and I was just like, well, you know what, you got to stop behaving like a child and you just got to snap out of this. So I started getting up early. I was exercising. You know, I started jogging. I started meditating. I was watched more motivational videos. I was taking cold showers. You know, I very much, I went to war with myself in many ways. And of yeah. course, I mean, and you know, since then, like since the start of this year, I feel like it, I've had like a miraculous turnaround as far as mental oh, health God. goes. And I think, um, and I mean, I still have my down days, don't get me wrong, I still have struggles and I think I've got a hell of a long way to go because I'm 21 at the end of the day and, mm. you know, I've still got a lot of, a lot to learn and I know that. Yeah. And but it's just about, I think, instead of just, but, you know, my point is, 
instead of sitting around just complaining about things, you know, whether you're unwell, whether you're in a job you hate, you know, whether you're suffering from past trauma or whatever it is, you, you need to think, OK, how can I how can I do something about this and then look at what options are out there? And like, you know, for me, you. for me recently, you know, I've just decided, right, I'm going to purely focus on my goals. I'm going to I'm going to exercise. I'm, you know, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to make sure that I've got I'm basically training my mind and my body and my spirit. So it's all one. So whenever challenges do come away, like if I get four o'clock in the morning, call that my mum's dead, like I don't fall apart, basically, because life is always going to have challenges at the end of the day. No matter what, we're going to have issues, no matter how big or small. And I think we just have to accept that. But I think I know for me personally, getting up early, exercising, eating healthy, not I'm not saying, you know, you shouldn't drink at all like or eat any junk food because it's good to treat ourselves. But, you know, don't drink too much. Try and cut down on bad food as much as you can. And yeah, do a job you love and just surround your life with positive people. I think that is the best way to deal with it at the end of the day. Yeah, that's but that's my thoughts on the situation. I really appreciate what you guys had to say as well. You know, you've obviously you've you've both been through a lot, but you know, you've come at the end of the day, you've made a massive comeback and the comeback's always bigger than the setback at the end of the day. So you've both done absolutely amazing. Hundred percent. And I appreciate I I, I look I was listening to you. And I was looking at you and I could 100% tell that as hard as that was for you to say it and be vulnerable at this point, you know, you got to be proud of yourself for that, man. And I, I, it sounds super patronizing and I'm really working on the way that I say, be proud of yourself, but it's not easy to, to share vulnerabilities. And, you know, that we're, we're guys, we're men right now. Yeah. yeah Three yeah, guys absolutely. talking, talking about a topic that, you know, you probably don't hear a lot of guys will probably talk who don't know each other really and talk about it. So, you know, you got to be proud of yourself for being able to speak about it. Okay. 